extraordinary honor this is. Um, you know, I'm, I'm incredibly grateful and, and frankly a little surprised uh, to be acknowledged for career achievement because I, I'm always looking forward to everything I haven't achieved yet um, and I'm afraid I'll lose my drive if I look back or you know, rest on my laurels, but this is an extraordinary laurel. This is, um, this one I'll keep front and center. <laughs> Um, you know, I was, 25 years ago, I was where you guys sat and, um, you know, contemplating my next big challenge, which was bridging the gap between having the dream and living the dream. In other words, how was I going to get paid for it? Um, I still have no idea, but I, I've sort of fumbled my way along and um, I'll just share with you what my root was. Um, Sorry, bound to happen. Writer, not actor. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, so I graduated, uh, and I did what? Uh, what basically what I did was I wrote. I wrote. I wrote more. A bunch of screenplays that went unread. Pilots that went unread. I just kept writing. And I worked in a bakery, and uh, it was a decent job until I got fired. Uh, then I worked as a bartender, uh, paid my rent, also uh, got fired. And eventually, after writing and writing and more writing and studying more writing, someone actually hired me. I was going to get paid to write. The script was a dance movie, ended up languishing on some, someone's shelf at, at Paramount, but still, someone had hired me and I had an agent. So I found that that got another job, which was uh, a staff, a writing job on a show called Class of 96. Tells you how long ago it was. So that's two jobs in a row now. I have, I'm definitely a writer now. It would be smooth sailing, that's the way it is, and yeah, I got fired. So we cut to a year later, I'm, I'm at my desk, I'm incredibly depressed and I've got this crushing debt and a, and a year long writer's block. You know, how could I have gotten fired? I mean, this is, you know, we, I always succeeded. I, I graduated from one grade to another, and then I got into a great college and then even better graduate school. It was all sort of a linear run rung at a time up. It was incredibly uh, a rude awakening to realize that that's just not how Hollywood works. It is confusing and circuitous and incredibly unfair, uh, in my opinion, and unreliable, uh, though rarely boring. So after my incredibly miserable year, I finally got another job. Uh, the grandparents here might recognize Dr. Quinn, medicine woman. <laughs> yeah. But I was in, I was a writer, you know. Yeah, until I got fired again, and then, but this time, I did not suffer a year's depression, this time it, it was just a few months. So now we begin like the beginning of a montage of my career over, say, uh, 10 years. So uh, a lot of shows that you, you've never heard of, uh, you may, may or may not have seen. Uh, Dark Skies, show got canceled. Magnificent Seven, thank you, John Watson. Uh, show got canceled. Pop, Bust in Public, got fired. Party of Five, worked on the last season, show got canceled. The Agency, fired. Birds of Prey, I quit. And then the show got canceled. The, the OC. I quit to avoid getting fired. Love Monkey, canceled. So, you know, bad choices, bad luck, up, down, up, down. Uh, but mostly I have sucked at the most important thing in our business, politics. You know, I always thought the work would speak for itself. You know, it, it, I've got to be honest, in Hollywood, it, it just, it, that's a, a percentage of it. Um, you know, the, it, it turns out that the people who you, you, your employers have to actually like you <laughs> and trust you and want to spend day after day with you. So, uh, you know, it, it really is all about relationships. And I stepped on more toes than I can count. I highly recommend not doing that. <laughs> I, I will just stop down for a second to say, in my defense, I think in some cases I may just not have been the right gender. Uh, you know, th that can be a cop-out, God knows I used it repeatedly, but the, the statistics were backing me up, and sadly, shockingly, those numbers have not changed. 
with the exception of the 40% of the uh, graduate class being women here, and thank you, you're so encouraging. Uh, for those <laughs> The, the reality of what you're walking into, I'm sure you know, currently 24% of the Writers Guild uh, uh, working writers are women. Just 13% of all directors are women. That's, that's appalling and that number hasn't changed. Um, you know, the, the fact is, this is you know, obviously worldwide, but in Hollywood it just hasn't moved at all. The fact is, is that there, there is no equality. There just isn't, it's a fact. And there wasn't then and there isn't now. You just have to acknowledge that. Um, and, you know, next time someone asks, you, you know, you, you hear someone come up, oh yeah, but I'm not a feminist. You know, that, that, I hear that a lot. And it's, well, then you're just not facing the truth, which is you're just not people. I'm rambling on about that because the, the amazing thing about you guys and about what we do is that we can do more than just talk about it. We can film it. Uh, I firmly believe if they can see it, they can be it. And you're going to see your names on, on many screens, big, small, minuscule, and it will thrill you every, every time. I remember my, my first film big screen credit, see my name up there, uh, but then I looked around the audience and I saw hundreds of young girls. You know what film that was. <laughs> Actually, there were thousands. And um, all of them, at that incredibly impressionable age of like 13 or so. And for better or worse, or worse, they were absorbing my words, my characters, and my point of view, which was utterly terrifying because up to that moment, I had not really been paying attention to what I was writing. So it, it really is an extraordinary <laughs> responsibility uh, it doesn't matter whether it's your intention or not. Your work will affect people's attitudes toward diversity, toward racial and gender equality, toward democratic ideals and, and tolerance. Uh, your work will register. And uh, I think, okay, so we're gonna put away my, my soapbox for a second there and kind of go on to eventually someone, uh, you know, hired me on Dexter, and then someone hired me to, on Twilight, and it was like this sort of, uh, came, seemingly came out of nowhere, but, at least my experience of it was, but if I did anything to earn those breaks, it's that I failed. And if I did anything beyond failing, I, what the, the, I'm sorry, the, the thing that I did better than failing, hopefully, is I got up. You're sitting there, you're kicking the teeth, you're bleeding on the ground, and that's all you can do is tell yourself, you know, tomorrow's gonna be better. And you know what, it, it isn't, I'm telling you. But it, <laughs> if, you, if you can convince yourself that, then the next day maybe it's a little brighter and a little brighter. And that really, to me, is the key to success, is uh, delusional optimism. <laughs>
And I wish for you the courage to fail so that you may succeed magnificently. Thank you.